Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. Um, welcome to our uh, Going Through the Bible series. And uh, today we're going to be looking at the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is um, the uh, fifth book, uh, also called the fifth book of Moses, right? So um, we're going to be reading Deuteronomy uh, chapter 5, verse twenty. Verses 1 to 21. Deuteronomy, verse 1 to 21. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 1 to 21. So a little bit longer, but um, let's, let's read together. Moses called all the people of Israel together and said, Listen carefully, Israel. Hear the decrees and regulations I'm giving you today, so that you may learn them and obey them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Mount Sinai. The Lord did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with all of us who are alive today. At the mountain the Lord spoke to you face to face from the heart of the fire. I stood as an intermediary between you and the Lord. For you were afraid of the fire and did not want to approach the mountain. He spoke to me, and I passed his words on to you. This is what he said. I am the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt to the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens, or on, or on the earth, or in the sea. You must not bow down to them, or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your oxen and donkeys and other livestock, and any foreigners living among you. All your male and female servants must rest as you do. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out with a strong hand and powerful arm. That is why the Lord your God has commanded you to rest on the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder you must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's wife. You must not covet your neighbor's house or land, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. God bless the reading of his word. Wow, that was Deuteronomy chapter 5, 1 to 21. Obey God's commandments. Obey God's commandments. So here's a little bit of background. The author here of the, um, the book, this book is Moses. It's the fifth and last book of Moses, completing the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch. And um, the Ten Commandments are repeated here. Um, as we also find them earlier, we see them in Exodus chapter 20. Uh, three, uh, chapter 20, verses 3 to 17. 
So if you have like a little right there, sometimes they have this little this like a you know Gideon Bible, you know, like they come in different colors and shapes. Um, so the Exodus version is usually found there of the Ten Commandments, right? So basically, this is a reminder of God's covenant with His people. Um, just a few weeks before they enter the promised land. So the focus here is on God who loves his people and he desires and longs for the Israelites to obey him. So our topic here is when we go and think about the Ten Commandments is to understand what it means to obey uh, God's commandments and to see them not as prohibitive but as protective. So let's think about that again. So we're trying to understand uh, what it means to obey God's commandments and to see them not as prohibitive, uh, but as protective. All right, so that's what we're gonna try to uh, uh, um, consider here today. So basically the um, commandments here in Deuteronomy are best understood as we turn back to Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 17. All right, so we're going to, we're going to read them again. If, if uh, you want to flip or read along, Exodus chapter 20, uh, verses 3 to 17. So we're going to read them verse by verse and then briefly consider what this all means. So we're reading Exodus chapter 20, 3 to 17 now. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the, in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of your, the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them, but on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God has given you, is giving you. You must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely against your neighbor, you must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. So uh, we basically think about the Ten Commandments here, um, thinking about it as a um, protective um, momentum. So must not a uh, clear command, right? We're not, we're not supposed to do that. So. Summarizing the Ten Commandments, um, we can think about it as something like this. So the first four, right? Um, the first four commandments are like in a, in a, in a, in a, in a like basically a position. Like the first four deal with our relationship uh, with God, right? It's the same in, in Exodus and here as we're reading Deuteronomy chapter 5, the same. So the, the first four deal with our relationship with God. And the last six deal with our uh, relationship with others, with other people, right? Pe relationships outside of God. 
So that's how you can remember them. The first four are basically our relationship with God, and the last six are dealing with our relationship with others, that is, our family and uh, non-relatives, right? So think a bit like about it as a cross, right? We have the different uh, axes, right? Like there's the um, there's there's the vertical axis uh, towards our relationship with God. And um, then there's the horizontal axis uh, dealing with our um, relationship with others. So that's a way to, to visualize and also memorize um, the, the commandments. So here's a big one for you to consider. What does this mean? Why are we called to obey God's commandments? So Jesus, when Jesus is on the scene, Jesus Christ our Lord, he puts these uh, four commands and the other six commands uh, into two, as we read in Mark 12, 29, 31. Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. God bless you in this word. So uh, we are reminded here by our Lord, our Lord Jesus, that the commandments he gives are not new commandments, but um, they're the same that we find there in the Old Testament. So um, there's, a, there's a protective benefit of obedience. And um, it comes out, it flows out from loving our neighbor, right, as we're commanded to do, since uh, as part of that, we can discern true from false. It gives us spiritual discernment um, for starters, right, just obeying the commandments um, and understand what is true, um, true from false. Um, the personal power of the Holy Spirit can work in and through your hearts and, um, you know, you'll be able to dis, uh, discern, uh, you know, if something, you know, deviates from these commandments. And um, so it's, it's an amazing blessing to have them, really. So that's part of the, the protective um, part of obeying these commandments. So in Second John, on this note here, on Second John, verses 5 to 7, <clears throat> we read, I am writing to remind you, dear friends, that we should love one another. This is not a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and he has commanded us to love one another, just as you heard from the beginning. I say this because many deceivers have gone out into the world. They deny that Jesus Christ came in a real body. Such a person is a deceiver and an antichrist, right? God bless the reading of his word. So that's a very big, um, important thing to understand that anybody or any you know, person or whoever who denies uh, Jesus Christ as God in the flesh, uh, as the Bible tells us here, is a deceiver and an antichrist. In other words, um, it's a satanic um, element here. People are uh, following Satan, the devil, and uh, not God. Right? So there's a very, very important uh, thing to consider here. So, all right. So, why is obedience to God and his commandments important for you and for me and for all of us as believers? Why is it important? It's, it's important because, well, Jesus commands us to obey him. In, in John 14, 15, we read, If you love me, Obey my commandments. If you love me, obey my commandments. And another part is that God, as Christ, helps us understand uh, what we cannot. So as we obey the, um, his commandments, the, the Ten Commandments, the writer of Hebrews tells us, chapter 4, verses 15 to 16, um, This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy 
and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. God bless the of us word. Of course, the high priest refers to our Lord Jesus Christ. So why? Why does he help us? Why does Jesus help us? Uh, the reason is that um, God wants uh, his very best for us, right? And Jesus' best, what, what Jesus sees and uh, tells us is best, is always best. Be um, the reason for that is because he, as a great high priest, uh, can see past, present, and future and, and all eternity, and we cannot, right? He is God in the flesh and can do that, and we cannot. So it also means that as we surrender to these commandments, obey the Ten Commandments too, we understand that God desires to have a personal relationship with us. So uh, remember it said in the commandments, he's a jealous God and that he is, um, um, but he wants, it's a, it's a different, it's a divine jealousy, not like human jealousy. Um, he, but the reason is he wants to have, he wants um, to have a personal relationship with us. And in that he has a perfect plan, uh, purpose and timing for every individual. God has a perfect plan, purpose, and timing for every individual, for you and me and every person. And all people who come to Christ, uh, we read in Jeremiah 1, verse 5. We read as Jeremiah reminds us, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. All blessed be his word doesn't just apply to Jeremiah, but to all, all believers, all Christians, right? And here's a big one. Jeremiah goes on to say, this is an awesome verse, really amazing. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 to 14, Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 to 14. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. Oh, bless me, Lord. Awesome. Isn't that awesome, God's um, plan and, and his promise here to give us a future and a hope? Um, it's just, oh, well, it's just one of my, my favorite verses to Jeremiah 29. 11 to 14. So going back to the commandments, there's a difference right, between obedience and disobedience. And there's always a contrast there. Uh, the Bible tells us that um, as we follow Christ, it puts us in the best position to receive God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness, and his divine love. So um, in Hebrews 10, 16 to 17, we read, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. God bless the of his word. In other words, as we follow and surrender to Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord, um, he um, wipes away our sins and um, he looks after us. It doesn't mean that we continue going on sinning. That's a wrong, false uh, perception and a false uh, approach to the Bible. But it means that as we surrender to Christ, uh, he works in and through our hearts and lives. And so um, obeying God and his commandments, um, uh, just as a point of departure, and then uh, turning to Jesus and let, let him guide and lead us, is the best and the most amazing thing um, that anybody can do. So with a surrendered, humble, repentant, obedient heart, um, we've got the Ten Commandments as our uh, protective um, shield, our protective momentum to help us uh, navigate through the challenges of life and especially the Christian life, right? So that is what our loving Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ is like. So may God bless you and keep you. Amen.